Right. You are. I like that. That was the first ever smoking section intro video right here. <laughs> Read it and weep, people. My guy, Austin. And we are joined here. Angry Capitalist. Yeah, the milkman. Unless milk, or make, milk, milk or be milk world. Check that out. My boys, how are you doing? Doing pretty damn good. Doing pretty well. How are you doing, man? I'm doing good, dude. I'm doing fucking good. Milk man survived the motherfucking hurricane. Bro, it's a milk or be milk world. <laughs> and, and my boys, we're out here from upstate New York. Real quick, if you want to give yourself like your own little personal rundown of who you are what you do and then we'll get to chatting right after um austin's dumbass has been on the show like four times already so he doesn't he's he's already he's been in the, up in the smoking section already but go ahead and give yourself a little intro and then we'll we'll take it from there uh, right so actual name is samuel uh tagline though is angry capitalist you can find me on youtube along with austin as well as corpse um, as well as instagram Mainly, I talk business, economics, that kind of thing, and a little bit of psychology on the side. Mm. Uh, overarching uh, Marine Corps as well. Austin, I know he went in right after me. Corpse, were, were you in the Marine Corps too? or Never. No, never? No. Never. Good for you. Your knees are going to last can't. longer. <laughs> no, yeah. no, he's been a solar installer for years and a dancer. Those things are shot. Oh, dude. never yeah. mind. These things are done. Dunzos. Um, but thank you for your service, though. I told Austin that when I first met him. Uh, hey, a LARP for living. It's yeah, much, much fucking respect to the military, but Pops was in it. My brother was in it. And they both were like, nah. When I was like, oh, I wanted to do Air Force. And they were just like, oh, okay. Nah, I like, nah, don't. I was like, well, the, like, you know, I was even kind of like, hey, well, Air Force is like the chilling one. Like, you know, no offense, but it's like, it's the yeah. chilling one. You know, they don't do, they don't do what these other guys do. And they're like, just no, you're not, you're not doing the military. Like, do something else. Like, okay. So just never did it. Um, hey, couldn't set you on a career path or a good set of knees, though. No, you know what? My dad, what's funny about him, especially with shit like that, he would tell me what to do, but never help me like do <laughs> anything like, anything you know, <laughs> like nothing like, ah, I'll oh, figure it out. It's like, okay. Well, I did have it figured out. Like I took the ASVAB already and everything like they were ready for me, but okay. Okay. Pops. I don't think uh, it's too late, bro. Let's get you a waiver. Bro. Sure, I'm, got take now. I'm got 37 got years old, bro. I can't. I've okay. I've helped two other people get in past the age of twenty five. We can do this, bro. It's not they a wouldn't. <laughs> they wouldn't take you because you're a single father too. Ooh. Yeah, never mind. I'm not kidding. They won't. There's, that's like a different waiver. <laughs> Depen depending on what happens with the whole global conflict situation. Oh, get drafted. Maybe they so. will, but you you don't want to go in in that in that no. Bro, I'm actually scared they're gonna do the draft. Like well, I, you won't be on it. Why wouldn't I? The draft it like cuts off at like thirty one for the Does army. It it's like twenty nine for the Marine Corps. Fuck! Yeah, I dude. got a couple, I got a month left. <laughs> <laughs> as as of right now, so tr trust me. If if it gets to a situation where they're drafting you. Everyone else is already <laughs> dead, so it's not like it matters at that point. Like, <laughs> Fuck. Oh, man. No, I seen something where – um, what was it? It was talking about, like, how the draft would actually work. Like, certain ages would be immediately drafted. Yeah, and like then the 18 have, to 22. Yeah, immediately drafted. And then everyone else after that, it's kind of like – I guess they would take people first who could – who could fill like immediate, I guess, like positions of leadership or whatever. And then the rest of the people, and then these next age groups would be like our absolute, like last line of defense. Like, yeah, 30, it's like 35 and up is like last line, bro. We're sending you guys out last. 30 and up is like the last, like, like yeah. almost all branches cut off at 30 or right before it. Like 29 to 31 is the cutoff. Or like they'll take you without a waiver. You're, you're chilling, dude. If they wanted you, you'd already be gone. 
you'd be like somewhere in the Pacific being a little meat shield for us so we can hop along <laughs> island hop. <laughs> Remember, you remember the art. You remember the end of the Guardians of the Galaxy where they're like, "What are you doing?" He's like, "I'm distracting him." Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, no, dude. literally. That's that's unfortunately what historically happens to draftees. No, bro, bro, bro. <laughs> and like, what's wild is too is is it's been what now three, like pretty much three full years now that you know it started out with with ukraine and russia and then it's just there's just been this slow progress of just all kinds of shit popping off you know like like since then and now ah you know before like it's 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 one of those things where like think back to when you're sitting in history class right and talking about world war one or world war two kicking off To our perspective today, we don't have like a real sense of the time between those events, between like the uh, kind of the preparatory stage of uh, the system of alliances, like World War One. That was building for years in advance, mm-hmm. and then conflict started to kick off, um, and then Ally World War One. It moved along pretty quickly. Um, but even in that situation, though, it's still years in the making to get everyone involved um, mm-hmm. until we think of the height of World War One. Mm-hmm. So, like, it, it moves a lot slower than people think, because when we look at a history book, it seems like it happens so fast. But to people's perspective, then it was taking months to years for it to get going. Mm-hmm. And even even for us to get into World War Two, we didn't really join it till the tail end of the. So just because yeah, there is yeah. stuff going on doesn't necessarily mean you are going to be the one to handle it, I guess. And that's one thing, like, to to both of those points where it's like America got involved in World War II so late. Like, you know, and even though we are regarded as the heroes, whatever, right? Like, we're the heroes of World War II. <clears throat> but both of those conflicts, they did. They took – there was, like – like. Even inside the German government itself, there was already so many different coups and this and that happened. Oh, yeah. Right. Like, left and right, bro. And then they get to a point where they say, okay, well, we're going to take this land, then we're moving over here. And then, yeah, then, you know, other nations started stepping up and saying, no, this isn't going to happen, start fighting back. You know, a few years passed by this time, though. And then America jumps in. And then it's a, now, now we have this completed arc story of what we learn right in the history books which is you know several years of drama you know compressed into four or five paragraphs of reading material for fucking seventh graders you know sounds like somebody's ancestry sucked at war (laughs) for real dude because it's like hey fam like two 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 points in there one all my family were already over on this side by world war one um <laughs> so we've always been on the winning side that's uh, the most important part the se- second though you do still have to keep in mind like were were germans by world war ii not gripped by the ideology of nazism they likely would have taken control of the continent. Mm. So if you think about a lot of the crazy shit uh, that they were doing with their economic policy, as well as, oh yeah, let's go ahead and take a vast majority of our population and murder them, you know, Mm -hmm. instead of having them be around to assist with shit. Um, Had that not taken place with that ideological bent, it may have been a very different story. Yeah. Yeah. I, and it, cause I hate to, uh, and I don't think it's glorification, right? But we're yeah. just, I'm trying to speak some, some fucking facts, right? Is, is, yeah. You, uh, you just, you take out that part, which is a major function of what happened out there. But if the biggest, you take, like, huge. Yeah. Huge, yeah. huge part, huge part of the apple pie. You take that out, though, right? And you introduce something else, right? Like, Ah, you know, he had a couple sex scandals, right? Like, or, oh, you know, he's a cokehead, Hunter Biden. Shout out. 
but <laughs> you know you introduce some other fucking any other dramatic fucking nutty shit that he could be doing and you still put what they did out there just even for germany alone is like some of the greatest like one of the greatest comebacks of all time like before the party really took place like they were like in a depression like germany was yeah. in a depression they were fucking like people were starving out there it was all back fucking, back it was all wars fucking, dude taking l's back to back, back to that's kind of crazy bro that's, on a world like on a it's, world stage it's honestly crazy that they went to war with the world once and then we were like, yeah, keep your army. And then they did sure. it again. And we were like, <laughs> still Spite. learn next time. Spite is a really, really uh, unrecognized trait in people. Oh, yeah. um, even, even uh, fuck, who was it? I forget the name of the general, but he had effectively looked at the Treaty of Versailles and was like, this isn't a surrender. This isn't a peace deal. Hello, buddy. Dude, I, saw I saw that. I saw that. Oh. <laughs> I thought you were about to get uh, robbed, dude. Can I join in? No? Okay. Just stand there at the edge of my camera. Like but, uh, of course, um, I think you had a few questions before we go too deep into the yeah. uh, the things of Nazism in World War II 10 minutes in. <laughs> hey, we got, we got straight into I that. Feel like, I feel like this is a conversation that's better suited with some whiskey and cigars again. Maybe some old fashions, oh, bro. That's that was that was a good vibe. That was good vibe. He, he wasn't that there was for it, dude. Vibe. We gotta we gotta recreate it. Yeah, bro. Sam, dude, we he were out in, we were out in Pensacola, man, and found bro. this fucking cigar shop. Cigar factory. Hell yeah, yeah call, c- shout out Cigar Factory, Pensacola, Florida. Um, and bro, like they let us smoke inside. It had a bar, like this whole little little whiskey bar. And dude, I bro, we got fucking wrecked there one night. We got ripped, dude. Wrecked. And then next thing we're talking about like gun policy table. needs a real change. <laughs> <laughs> like, yo, dude, dude. I remember I remember someone walking in, like, what are you guys talking about? And I was like, prison reform? Like, I'll take a re- please. <laughs> <laughs> uh dude, please well, make Sam hey, and you living up like you Churchill. that time, man. Yeah, right? Exactly. Oh, man. It was nuts. If you, if you replaced Jake with Sam, like, he would have fit in perfectly there. Like, that's mm-hmm. more like Sam's speed than it was Jake. Yeah. Jake Wh- was whoever this Jake guy is. Another Marine. Uh, yeah, yeah, what, yeah, what was his MOS? <laughs> uh, I forget what he did. I picked on him a lot for it, though, so nothing memorable. Yeah, that's why. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my god! So, dude, wait. So, yeah. So, people can know a little bit more about you too before we jump into some crazy shit. Um, you have your other channels. You do talks around the economy, right, and economics. Correct. And you also said psychology. Yep. So, primarily economics, business, and psychology. Uh, In regards to psychology, the main thing that I'm currently focusing on is what's known as MBTI, or Myers-Briggs Personality Type. Uh, Austin, you've probably met some chick who gave you that personality test thing in the past Mm -hmm. um, and judged you for it. Yeah, you're smiling because I I know that's happened to you. I flashed that thing like the uh, American Psycho movie where it's just like... (laughs) Oh, the tastefulness of it. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Um, so that's that's one of the main things that I've been diving in for the past God's year, year and a half, something like that. Do you like um, the Myers Briggs? Uh, do you like it's, its like accuracy? It's, it's pretty useful. Um, for a little bit of background context for anyone who's not super familiar as to what the hell it is I'm talking about. Uh, the way I would best explain it is people tend to use different types of cognition, meaning different ways of thinking about stuff. And you can rank order what people tend to use most to least and also in what way. And that's how you come out with this so-called personality test. Hmm. It can indicate a bit about your personality, but really it's more of how you think and operate. Uh, It doesn't really go into why it doesn't go into like, Freudian, anything like that. It's just kind kind of like a, a user's manual for the d- different types of people out there. Mm. And um, what so for- what would you say is like 
when when you're doing your studies right or are you applying it to maybe like how people are approaching business choices and their behaviors or is it just something for people to have like a rough outline for themselves so typically it's been used for people to have a rough outline for themselves as well as other people hmm. so for example um certain personality types and these are arranged by a four letter system uh, as an example my type would be entj you mm. tend to get along with certain people more or less based off of how the way that you think interacts with each other mm. what i've started to look into a little bit more and i'm trying to come at this from more of an organic research perspective as opposed to just reading whatever anyone else has put out is how a person's personality type affects their personal finances as well as how they conduct themselves in business uh, mm. professionally. Mm. Cause dude, I'm, <clears throat> you know, I'm not a finance dude or someone doing the fucking stock market. Not, not my not my thing, but I do like it. But I know for a fact when I'm up on the roof, right, working, yeah. and then the moment I hop off, bags come off, it's a different person, bro. <laughs> like, I am a different animal. And I always wondered, like, what about my personality or just how, like, my brain works where that turns, like, on and off, you know? Like, because yeah. I, I feel like guys, like, in the stock, like, especially, like, day traders, they're just always on. They're always looking at their fucking phone. They're always like, you know, checking, 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 checking. I I can't even imagine trying to live like that. Uh, I do invest in the stock market, but they're like, there's a huge kind of rainbow in that whole world. So you've got like your day traders we we're talking about, right? And you're exactly right. That's someone who is always on. You have to be. Um, it's borderline like a neurosis. Mm. Uh, hello, buddy. If you're going to sit here, just chill out. Okay. Um, <laughs> sorry for the interruption mid podcast here. I'm selling so much chair. Mm -hmm. Um, you've got to constantly be on always looking at what the markets are doing. That's way too much for me. Um, and it doesn't yeah. suit my personality in the way that I tend to think and operate. Um, especially like emotionally to, to actually make money as a trader, you've got to have an insane level of emotional discipline. Um, yeah. for myself, I'm more of like an income or a dividend investor. I want to find a good company or a fund, which is like a basket of other companies or of debt tranches, buy that thing and have it pay me cash. And if it can stay going nice and steady in terms of its valuation, awesome. If it appreciates like the price of the stock or the fund goes up, fantastic. Just keep paying me monthly though. That's the main thing. Yep. <laughs> yep. Uh, I got, I have some stocks right now in the portfolio where I got, I first learned about stocks through day trading and stuff. But then again, yeah, I don't have yeah. the emotional discipline, right? Where it's like, you know, with some of that stuff, like, cause I don't want to knock it. Cause the guy who taught me, taught me so well, where he was like, you're going to see it hit a number. He's like, and you're in what I'm going to teach you is going to tell you to sell. He's like, but you're going to become attached to that number. And he's like, and you're going to yep. think it's going to move a certain way because you're attached to it and you're not reading. Cause like the chart, the candlesticks, the fucking lines when it's green versus that's, that's when it's a, red. Yeah. That's a whole other thing is like trying to figure out your technicals and looking off charts versus um, uh, for Case in point on that on that topic with day trading specifically, and one of the reasons why I don't do it is it's all too easy. And even like massive funds, so-called Wall Street professionals will do this to where they'll get stuck and focused and looking in on that chart and the types of moves it'll make. But they'll get so focused in on that that they'll ignore whatever the rest of the market is doing or they'll ignore the broader macroeconomic picture. And then that comes in just like you're getting hit by a hearth, earthquake or hurricane, mm -hmm. jacking your whole strategy up because you got sucked in. Mm -hmm. Do you, and that, and, and for that reason, right. I have found, you know, a couple companies they're steady. They've been around for forever. 
They pay good dividends. And I've just been slowly buying them. You know, Robin Hood, yep. shout out Robin Hood, sponsor this podcast. A lot of people don't like you guys, but I fuck with you. I I I, I hate Robin. <laughs> <laughs> I do. Everyone tells me, why? Get TD Ameritrade. Do whatever you got to do, dude. Just not Robin Hood. I'm like, bro, listen, it's who I started with. I can't move. Like I just, I can't. I, do I, it. I, I can, I can appreciate that. I, I ended up moving to Weeble. Um, back during the whole GameStop fiasco, they had locked mm-hmm. down like other trades too and stuff. Like mm-hmm. even just, hey, I just want to sell this off because I'm not even like doing anything like that. Um, I was like, yeah, no, F, F this, I'm out. What? Okay, so correct me if yeah. I'm wrong, but what it seemed like had happened was that they had these trades right and they had these stocks yes. and so much money was flowing at us at any given moment at that whatever moment it was where it just crashed that so much cash was flowing that robin hood wasn't able to keep up with the the processing like they didn't have enough money on hand mm to say we're going to pay you all of this right now right because they're supposed to be instantaneous like you know i mean like an instantaneous sell correct so that's something that happened in a few situations um the the broader implication though that it largely come out was they had effectively tried to freeze the trades of specific securities because they were trying to get ahead of the regulators coming in. Mm. Um, because it, to, to give context, this all started with the GameStop. It affected other things too, whereby a whole bunch of people were buying into a security because they had found out that a huge hedge fund um, had put some kind of an options call on that security. When I say security, I mean a stock, right? Like a company. So they'd put a short on the stock and they were running the counter bet. And also at the same time, buying more of that stock to drive the price up. And this was like um, uh, uh, a herd action of to pump the stock up, which this was kind of new. There wasn't really any regulation to cover something like this. I, I can give Robin Hood the full benefit of the doubt on the one hand, which is they were trying to do the right thing uh, and not have the regulators come down on them, especially being a newer brokerage. But at the same time, though, this is this is not something that's orchestrated. Mm-hmm. It's nothing that's being done by an insider. There is no actual regulation or laws against doing this. They should have stayed the hell out of the way, in my opinion. Yeah. Um, and freezing these traders' ability to buy and sell specific securities, I think they had even gotten sued for that as well. And I think that's, if I remember correctly, that's where they had also come in and said, hey, because of all this activity that was going on, we did do this, but there was also this issue with various orders just not being able to be filled. Uh, because of volume. I don't know if that was a real thing that was going on or if that was just an excuse given to uh, uh, the courts at that point in time. They came out with, uh, speaking about GameStop, they came out with this Godzilla game and I had pre-ordered it and then I never finished paying it. And they kept it like, oh, you have this pre-order and it's this Godzilla game that came out 10 years ago. And every time I go in there, they ask me if I want to pay on it. And like, it doesn't, I don't. I don't know if anybody works at GameStop, but if like someone could fix that, it's gonna be really <laughs> fucking or just give me the game because like that Godzilla game was trash, but it sells. For, they discontinued it because it was so trash that it sells for like hundreds of dollars now, and I never got it because I like lost my job that week or like I moved or something, and I just couldn't pay on it. How much uh, do you owe left on it? uh all 60 dollars i think I <laughs> like the, the five that like lets you reserve the right to put something down oh my god why don't you just pay the money and then flip it they don't have it anymore it's like a system error that I, they've had for like eight years now <laughs> uh oh, oh my god dude that's fucking... all like that's all i could think about while you guys were talking you guys said gamestop and it clicked that memory of every time going well, in there i'm trying memory to think of the 
I'm trying to think of the group I had seen. I think it was like Wall Street Bets or <laughs> Gorilla Army or so, it was some fucking crazy name, dude. And I just remember so, seeing it like float around on Twitter. Yeah, it started with Wall Street Bets. Mm. Um, and then the the hedge fund they were running again against or funds because uh, they'd beaten out one like they a bunch of redditors with Robinhood accounts. <laughs> beat this first hedge like, fund. You said that like a slur, bro. <laughs> <laughs> it really like worked. It of, really is. You you hit the hard R in Redditors. <laughs> <laughs> I, I did. I did. I'm on Reddit. Like I can. I'm I'm on Reddit. I can uh, yeah, he's, hard R. <laughs> he's, he's a redditor. Um, but still though, it's it's this uh, uh kind of very mimetic experience whereby a bunch of Yahoos on the internet some of whom were extremely sophisticated, so not to cut them, to sell them short in the slightest, but a lot of them aren't. They had beaten out this first hedge fund. Like, they beat they beat a hedge fund. A second larger hedge fund came in, bailed out this other hedge fund that was going to be put, like, underwater. Like, they tanked the hedge fund on this bet. It would put, put them out of business. A second one came in, bought out that hedge fund, and they were winning against that one. So then the exact circumstances, I'm not exactly sure of, but Wall Street Bets had been shut down by the people at Reddit. And so then they had started up various other subreddits um, mm -hmm. or other Reddit pages, one of which was Guerrilla Army, and they'd produced a whole bunch of other uh, uh, offshoots. Uh, so that way they'd have backup platforms. Um yeah, so it, it started with Wall Street Bets. Wall Street Bets got shut down and that proliferated. Bro, and I knew guys here in in Oxnard, California making dough. They made dough off of GameStop. Uh it was GameStop, AMC, and Dogecoin Doge. that Doge. went Doge. fucking bonkers, bro. I made a thousand bucks off Dogecoin in five days. I'm not normally a trader. But I was like, yeah, let's see what happens. I just threw like 50 bucks on it. Oh, and now, bro. Now, 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 keep in mind, I'm, I'm a guy who's like more of a, an investor, not a trader. So brief thing on there. Traders and investors, what separates the two are time horizons. Typically, I call it at about three months. So a trader has a very short time horizon. They're looking to buy and flip trade securities. An investor is looking to buy it, hold it for the long haul, appreciation, dividends, that kind of thing over years and years. Um, now, I'm not normally a trader, but it was one of those things where I was like, eh, screw it, 50 bucks. And it, it worked out. Oh, dude, my, dad, so much. my dad made like, I don't think he wants me to put it out there, but my dad like made like 20000 on it. And God damn. Yeah. And wow. he, had like a, he had like a 19... I don't remember what year we had like a really beat up Silverado and he went out and bought like a two, like it was like a couple years newer, but not like a whole, like, like in the same generation. Yeah. Cause he loved it, but it kept breaking down. I remember one time we broke down and he used like a bottle cap to get it going again. Like put the cab <laughs> off my, oh my God. put it on there. And we, we had like a three hour drive left. He loved that thing, but it was a piece of crap and he's got a family. So <laughs> he's, like, yeah. he's like, I traded it all. And he's like, He's like, I just got a new Silverado, and it's like a five-year newer one. He's like, it's silver now. I was like, love that for you, man. Fucking <laughs> okay. yeah. nah, I'm I'm way more into long-term investing, bro. Like, like got into a couple. Like I'm saying, I got into a couple of securities. Um, yeah. you know, a couple of stocks where it was good dividends, right? They're almost they're at the point now where they're paying me more than what the stock is worth good as a single security. Yeah. So it's like, now I just got those on repeat and I'm just chilling. I'm like, yeah, just do you, roll. do you, uh, with your brokerage, do you have it set on drip where it automatically reinvests or mm -hmm. how do you do that? Yeah, I do. I do do a automatic reinvest on two. There's like, there's, Two out of the four of them that are like my main, my my main ones. Two of them I have on an automatic, on a uh, on a repeat. Yeah, the other ones yeah. I don't. Because I want to okay. be able to like when that 
does come in, whether it's quarterly or monthly or whatever, I want to have it at my disposal, you know, cause it, I, either it, I'm it, not too interested in the company or something. It, or, or that's, not. that's my same thing too, is I started doing the automatic reinvestment, but the way that I'll typically do it, um, is I just buy in on down days. So mm -hmm. if the market as a whole is doing something crazy, but the underlying security that I actually own is still sound. If the market tanks down like three to 5% in a day, I'll just go ahead and buy more. Mm -hmm. um, so I want to have that cash sitting there and build up until it drops in price again. I'd like to say uh, if you ever hear financial advice from me, it is like probably a joke. Never take any. <laughs> I just pay gas with negative money in my account. Do not take financial <laughs> advice from me. I make poor financial decisions. Bro, and I was it's, talking to somebody. Okay. I was talking to somebody about this podcast period and they're like, you know, about some of the jokes I make, whatever. And I'm like, you know, people probably take advice from you. I'm like, listen, if you're taking advice from me, yeah, on that's, this, this podcast, is a, this is a, this you... is a really, really good, uh, important time. I'll, I'll go ahead and do the disclaimer if you're okay with it guys. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So, please keep in mind, you're watching a podcast with three dudes. We, <laughs> three I'm not a dudes. licensed <laughs> financial advisor. And I'm not a, um, uh, I'm not a CPA. Either either one of you guys are you CPAs or licensed financial advisors? No. no. no? Okay. Good. No. Cool. Anything we discuss within this podcast is purely educational entertainment. Uh, don't be a bitch. Take responsibility for yourself. Do your own due diligence. <laughs> if you relate to me at all, seek help. It is too late for me, but there is still time for you. <laughs> it's not too late for you, Austin. I believe in you. Uh, yeah, we can say it. We, we could turn that. We can turn that puppy around, boy. <laughs> they say it ain't, it ain't nothing a little alcohol won't fix. A little alcohol, a little drunk swiping on Facebook uh, dating, and, and I'll be all right. And That's a good pastime right there. And so for a long time too, though, <laughs> like I had always wanted to get really like more, like more educationally sound, right. When it comes yeah. to my money, how it behaves. Right. And I don't know, like there's, how does un, cause there's some November's coming, right. So we yep. all know what that means. Um, November's coming. You're hunting. Right. And there's some litigation that looks to be passed on unrealized gains. And that is something I still don't quite understand. And if you could brief me on that, brother. Uh, if you need to okay. be briefed on that, you need to hit the fucking gym, nerds. Get all this fucking gym. <laughs> <laughs> like, what? Um, but I'll, I'll, let, uh, I'll let Sam take that one from here. Right on. So, effectively what happens with any kind of an asset. Now, when I say asset, I mean something that holds value. Your car is not an asset. Dear God, please dispel that myth. Um, so if we're talking about stocks or real estate or a business, right? Those are all good examples of an asset. Now, the whole thing with realized versus unrealized gains specifically capital gains, is let's say, for example, I own a bunch of stock and I sell it and I sell it at a profit. I have realized the appreciation on that stock. Same thing with real estate, right? Uh, I live in a duplex, which I own or occupy. If I own that duplex and let's say 10 years passes by um, and that duplex has grown in value, or just the current has been inflated away to where it gives a perception that it's grown in value. Um, but that's a whole other story. And if I sell it, I have realized a gain on it. Now, what they're talking about with an unrealized gain is when the theoretical price that you could sell that asset for goes up. Now, what they're proposing to do is to tax that asset and make you pay on a gain that you have not realized. And that theoretically, let's say, for example, they uh, assess your asset one day and you are now locked in and you have to pay taxes on that asset. And then tomorrow, the day after it's assessed, everyone else also holds assets of that class and they have to pay taxes on it. 
Well, now they might go ahead and sell it, but you still owe that tax. Mm. So this is this one. Of- I'm not paying taxes, dude. I don't care. Who would it take? Who would it take for you to pay taxes? Who would they have to send? Be Selma Hayek in a prime, bro. <laughs> I I already pay taxes, so I can't even. Oh, I can't that. even. Yeah, yeah. Google, I know. Google I'm, fact I'm check I'm that. Legally <laughs> compliant, <laughs> dude. I can't. I I just don't get where. Oh, and a brief a brief uh, tangent on that too, because I know someone out there is going to make this kind of comment. Well, it's only a tax on assets or people who are worth more than a hundred million, four hundred million, whatever the hell it is. Yeah, that's what they said about income taxes too. And uh, Uncle Sam takes about thirty percent of my paycheck every month. So yeah, yeah. upstate, upstate New York or New York's pretty. It's pretty brutal right about that one. It's brutal. I that. Sorry, I, 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 I cut you off there, Cor. Um, no, I just don't see like. My thing is, is what I've noticed about the stock market. And one thing that I, because I'm, I'm really big on words, right? And the way that people choose to say. He likes certain, a little wordplay. Like, yeah, the, the words that they literally fucking choose to say. Like, you know what I mean? Like, there's so many ways you could describe something. And the way you, the way you describe it to me is important. So they say people That's step. Right. So, so people, yeah. they say, oh, someone stepped into the market. There was a buyer that stepped in. Oh, a buyer stepped wow. out, right? Or a, or a holder stepped out. So to me, right, taxes, I, I don't think we should be paying all these fucking taxes. Like, I think it's a little fucking crazy, but I understand that money is necessary for the government to run. How do they collect this money? Yes, there should be some kind of taxes that we pay, whatever. Yeah, but there's, there's a... a sorry to take this on a kind of a weird tangent there. Um, you know, angry capitalists, one of the reasons that pisses me off about our economy. Um, I'll, I'll use an example of a tax that I'm okay with the Robert Pitt, the Robertson Pittman tax or act. I'm probably butchering that horribly. Um, as I just made a reference to deer hunting here recently, right? Mm-hmm. Anytime you buy a weapon So firearm, bow, ammo, um, you buy a hunting license, you buy anything camouflage that is sold as hunting apparel, turkey calls, deer calls, doe piss, whatever, right? Mm -hmm. There's a flat tax on that, and that funds wildlife conservation. That funds uh, uh, the management of public lands as well as of the uh, uh, various species that are out there. That's the kind of tax that, like, hey, look, it, it makes sense. I can live with that. Mm-hmm. Uh, taxing someone for working or for living in a house. A little crazy. A little bit. Sorry, continue. It, cause it, okay, so it, it, it doesn't drive incentive, right? And I feel like just as humans, right, we are very incentive-driven, right? Like, Indeed. We we want to try to stay warmer, stay drier, stay this, that, blah, 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 blah. And so <clears throat> you pass this tax on an unrealized gain. And, you know, I just feel that more people are going to step out of our market. Right. And and maybe you can even talk about what you might know about like the bricks, because it's like there is new mark there's markets everywhere around the world correct right? so there that's um that's a really good topic to touch on and i'll i'll refer to it as tax avoidance mm-hmm. now before we go too far into this um with any presidential candidate who is proposing this kind of thing and you have to remember she's also receiving a lot of funding and a lot of support from very big companies and institutions and very wealthy individuals. And that seems very contradictory, right? Mm -hmm. You have to remember the most important rule, the golden rule. Have you guys heard of the golden rule? Treat others the way you want to be treated. No. Jerk off on a porta potty on a hot day. (laughs) Uh, That's a good rule. Not the golden rule though. Uh, Keep doing it then. Uh, the golden rule is he or she, in today's 
Khan, I mean world, who has the gold, makes the rules. Mm, the golden rule. That being said, mm. gold just doesn't refer to money, though. It's whoever has uh, the thing of desired value in any negotiation, right? Mm -hmm. Money, gold, that's typically a pretty good thing to want and to have. Um, which these individuals who are very wealthy and all these institutions, if they're backing this candidate who's saying this, they're making rules that'll benefit themselves somehow. Uh, it's mm -hmm. a regulatory capture is what it's called, right? Mm -hmm. So what we'll likely see from this is there are other markets where you can trade um, and where you can conduct business in the stock market. Likewise, I would be extremely, extremely uh, surprised to not see some kind of loophole mechanism whereby all of such candidates, rich donors, could go ahead and continue to conduct themselves like normal while throwing a good percentage of their competitors under the bus. Mm. A lot of people would look at what I'm saying as very cynical. But if you hear a congressman who have started to be a little bit open about how legislation works, people are literally getting onto their Robin Hood or Rebel accounts immediately after passing some kind of a resolution on, on the, in the halls of Congress. So if you think that the whole idea of, oh, yeah, we're going to tax all these rich people, uh, uncapitalized gains, never mind the market effect of what that's going to have to people's pensions and retirements. Mm-hmm. But if there's not going to be some kind of little back door that these very wealthy, connected people are going to use, you're huffing glue, fam. And there's always that. There's always the – like I didn't realize bills and stuff weren't like single issue. I didn't no. realize that that wasn't, no. that wasn't a thing. I didn't realize that until I was like much older, right? Yeah. And so – yeah, if you're pa if you're if you're passing a twenty five percent unrealized gains tax, there's something in that fucking bill that these corporate guys are. They're like, oh okay, like you know what I mean? Like all right, like cool, we'll let this slide. Like you know what I mean? Because that's in there, and we're gonna work that motherfucker to the yeah. death of it. Like you know, because <clears throat> I don't know. I don't like to be like so like Sally Sob when it comes to to America because I think America fucking rules, but. Corporations have taken control of the U.S. government. <laughs> it, um, it was said by uh, Milton Friedman, uh, an economist. You've probably seen his videos either in school or through YouTube clips. Um, a quote that he had said was, the greatest threat to the free market and to capitalism are other business people. Mm. As a brief example of that, right? If you talk to all these uh, corporate executives, oh yeah, you know uh, the capitalism, you know the free market is great, but we need some regulation, specifically on my industry, usually, to either quash competitors or to prevent new entrants into the marketplace. Although we're doing a lot of things right and we're still by far kicking ass compared to the rest of the world. Unfortunately, that's a very real problem in our economy that we face more and more is this mm -hmm. kind of uh, corruption. Mm -hmm. And there's and then I mean, I knew shit was going to get really get cracking once once the bricks formed and once you started having this conversation of moving off the U.S. dollar. And even then, I didn't really understand how that worked until someone started saying, like, well, just imagine anywhere you went with a U.S. dollar. They just said, nah, we don't like we don't accept that here. Like, that doesn't work here. Just imagine like, oh, like, oh, what do you mean that doesn't work here? What do you mean that doesn't that doesn't fly here? And so now that the BRICS is forming and then you have these corporations that, you know, and all these businesses or just investors themselves who are like hey well we're not doing we're not doing business here no more we can do business over here where they have certain regulations and rules in their countries well i mean maybe not the best country to do business in but who knows you know well it's 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 one of those things whereby uh, uh in in today's economy and globalized connected world you can conduct business in the u.s but you can 
do that by doing business in, I don't know, Ireland, which is a, a tax haven nation. Mm-hmm. And to all these people who conduct business in this fashion, it's just a matter of he- telling your lawyers what kind of a result you want. And your lawyers filling out a bunch of forms, paying some fees, or in certain countries, bribes, to go ahead and fill stuff out. We keep doing the same thing as normal, but we just change the legal structure to make ourselves exempt. Mm-hmm. Like due to like, I know there's certain websites right now where it's like you could go on there, you pay the dude, and yeah, he gets your business address changed to whatever you know, whatever yeah. address and gets it filled out. So you're not paying X, Y, and Z taxes. You just got to pay a couple fees for this and that and you're done. Yeah. So I, you- uh, I was working on a, uh, business venture. Um, I ended up having to take a step away from it for a while because of personal reasons, losses in the family, just mm-hmm. life situation stuff going on. Uh, but I had set up a C corp in Delaware and it was a couple hundred bucks. Mm-hmm. And you just go onto this website, fill out what you want. They submit all the paperwork properly for you. And bang, within a few minutes, I had a corporation formed. Boom. Yeah, and you see the ads for him all the time, too. Some of these websites, you see him on Instagram. You see him on Facebook. Fucking Taylor I, Graham, I, I see the more. As soon as I did that for the first time, I got flooded with ads for it. Which kind of pissed me off. Be- not not that I mind seeing the ads. It's because it's like, oh my god, you guys suck at marketing so bad. <laughs> I've already I've already bought the thing. Now you're marketing to me. You should have done that like two months ago. They're trash. <laughs> this is trash. Um, on on the topic of bricks, though, I am not overly concerned about it quite yet. Um. I still do see the dollar as being the preeminent currency as it pertains to a medium of exchange globally. Uh, The reason being is all the countries that are forming BRICS, there's no trust, there's no – all of their currencies and stuff are so far manipulated by themselves that you can't get the Russians to use the yuan and you can't get the Chinese to use the ruble – or to get the uh, anyone else to use the rupee, so there's there's not too much of a concern there yet. However, what you will see though is more uh, international chain uh, trade being done outside of the dollar system, or if it's being done within the dollar system, it won't be on SWIFT, it won't be digital dollars. It'll be like physical um, or some other exchange platform that they may use. So I'm, I'm not super worried about the bricks at this point in time. It may change in a few years, though. Because, I mean, militarily, that's yeah. one thing. Right. But Correct. I'm just – I've just grown more and more concerned with them because America is the place to fucking be. Everybody loves vacationing here. USA. USA. Um, Right, I've, we fucking rule, dude. Get over it, Russia. Get fucking over it, dude. We rule, bro. But like, you know, or people want to go to France. They want to go to London. They want to go to, you know, they want to go somewhere in Spain. Like these places that still have, you know, that still have their dealings with us. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I know, I know we can't always rely on that, but no. At the same- on, on that topic, too, militarily, um, this this has been a, um, a bit of a trend ever since the end of the Cold War with the fall of the USSR. Mm-hmm. The, US, the U.S. has started to go ahead and kind of uh, uh, retract back a lot of our involvement throughout the world. Now, of course, for a lot of us who grew up in the GWAT era, it doesn't seem like that. Um, but I, I think that we are as a country, especially as our generation gets older and gains more influence, I think we're likely going to become more of like, um, hey, we want to have our basket of friends who we're super cool with and offer us something and everyone else can go pound sand. Yeah, for um, real. So the, the bricks may even be a natural reaction to us becoming a little bit more insulatory as we go forward. Um. Mm-hmm. 
uh, is an example. We're talking kind of like a NAFTA plus type situation. So you've got North America will probably integrate with more of Central and South America, um, Japan, Korea, the UK, and the Scandinavian countries. Like, and I don't, I see, I have a problem with the word when they toss around the word nationalist, right? Like, because, you know, technically that's just someone who has, you know, like an obscene amount of patriotism and love for their own country and blah, blah, blah. And to me, I'm, to me, I guess if that's the word that they want to paint me as, it's cool. But I just feel like America should have more dealings with America right and with the direct the the countries that directly line our borders right like yeah, Canada, yeah our, our, our hemisphere it's um it's it's crazy because we're talking right now about an idea uh that was prevalent during roosevelt i mean teddy roosevelt not fdr um mm-hmm. if you want to get me going there's a whole other topic but during <laughs> teddy Ro- or theodore roosevelt he he did Teddy, I'm sorry. He hated being called Teddy. Theodore Roosevelt's um, administration. That was the direction of America's future was more uh, hemispheric, being within the Americas and within the North Atlantic and the North Pacific, Mm -hmm. um, as opposed to the Middle East, that whole quagmire, being involved super deeply with uh, more of interior Europe's problems. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, FDR, he would have loved the homeless population they have got going on right now. <laughs> oh, yeah, he would have. Um, um, right up his alley. And, bro, I, I just don't I see... Soon, buddy. I, I just don't see the issue. I, I, I get, like... It took me a while, right? But then... Yeah. I had some dudes tell me, like, you know, I would have rather have been over there fighting than to be here fighting. Yeah, for sure. I get that. So, like, because I was always like that, why are we fucking, argh. like, you know, like, I was that angry fucking 20 year old fucking Democrat. Well, um, <laughs> I, I slid that in there real it's, quick. Real it's, quiet. It's, it, it's hilarious, though, because now suddenly we're hearing from more of the right end of politics of being more insulatory and being more isolationist. As opposed to the Democrats, who are being more of that more way, like they've uh, more more hawkish, mm-hmm. uh, more more mongering, saber rattling. So the whole thing with like Russia, Ukraine, um, not having like a very solid idea of like, hey, we should end this conflict as soon as we can, so people stop dying. Well, that's not. I'm, that's not yeah. new to us. Like the banana wars. Like we were like. The Marines yeah. were like mercenaries, dude. Like, we were just showing up, getting paid, stacking bodies, and going to the next island, dude. Like, that's yeah. not even a hundred. That's not even a hundred years ago, dude. No, no, that's it's to to pretend like this is anything new. We've got, and I know it doesn't seem like it. But we've got like no. the least amount of engagement we've ever had going on, or at least boots on the ground, than we've ever had in America's inception. Indeed, we've always been just. And, and never in the same places either. Like when you think about it, you think like there would be a united front with like the army and the Marines or like the Navy and all that, but they'll be in like separate like battle theaters and then just doing their own thing, engaging entirely different sets of enemies. We don't, we don't and play for the well first together. time. We're yeah. For the first time ever, we're like just drone striking people. And I know that sounds really insensitive, but it's <laughs> used That's to not even business, bro. Not even I mean, 20 years ago, it was like boots and doors. Well, it, you're not wrong there. And really, what's a better approach? Uh, a drone yeah, strike, a, well, a drone I, strike really with like a, a drone that spits swords out of the side, taking one guy off his balcony, or us having the Marines show up, marching across your desert to flank you and then burning your country down like bro could you yeah, imagine cell phone up. could you have imagined bro the first time someone saw a fucking tank dog like just <laughs> clink, 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 and they just look and there's this I just give up dude behemoth of a machine up. just right there, like what the fuck is that <laughs> like you know like what the fuck is this dude airplanes 
airplanes hadn't even been existing. Airplanes, for like, airplanes changed the game, dude. Helicopters changed the game. Bro, those you things should. weren't even in existence for like 40 years before they were starting to drop bombs wasn't, out the base. Wasn't, wasn't helicopters specifically made for the Vietnam War? No, like 10 years. Yes. What was it? Like they 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 had they had um they had like uh, the engine but they didn't have prototypes it the plane. they had the engine they had the rotors they had all the pieces and like I the, believe that the general prototype the ability to to launch straight up and down I believe it had to be taken off from a plane and then it could hover that's nuts yeah I just don't I just that spam and sunscreen was also made for the Vietnam War spam and spam. sunscreen yep and sunscreen us whiteies were getting spam and sunscreen. burned. Spam and sunscreen were also byproducts that we no more. I did. See, bro, and again, Last right? Thing you. We go a little places. We spread a little of America. It's all good, right? <laughs> I'm down with that, right? It's, that's cool. But like, when to me, when shit, no, because there's not a single voting American right now who can't say that shit is a little weird right now in america like shit's a little fucking weird yeah so so why are we saying like oh let's just you know pump some more money into this other war keep pumping money over here to these people like you know or money laundering we, that's that's yeah. my first instinct is like is as soon as i look at the amount of funds that are being moved in any given thing and it's specifically money um I'm, I'm guessing there's some backroom deals going on. May, maybe oh, I'm cynical. Yeah, I just assume it's... that's how politics work. Oh, oh, bro, bro, bro. Like, okay. And this is where people got me fucked up is, is they think because I say something about the Bidens or I say something about this, that like I'm inherently Being a party. Yeah. I'm, I'm a party. I'm a loyalist, whatever. Right. Cause I was a Bernie dude. Okay. Um, so people got me fucked up, but it's like, I'm not going to, we're not going to sit here and act. Like that shit don't happen, right? Like, oh yeah, it does. What? Who was it? Dick Cheney and what was the name of that fucking group? Dick Cheney. Um, what was the name of the fucking contractors who rebuilt Iraq? Right, oh, Blackwater. Yeah. No, yeah, like, like, bro, no or one of no their bit, subsidiaries. One of their subsidiaries was on Blackwater, like their third name or something. Well, yeah, well, there was a list of Academy companies. And they've had like twenty names. There was a list of companies, I guess, too, who got contracted throughout periods. And it was just kind of like a like that mafia style, like, hey, just wait your turn in line. It's going to come back around. You'll have work. You know, like yep. you'll be out of work for three months. These guys will take over the contract for a little bit, blah, 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 blah. And they just kept fucking running the money. Sure, that was George W. Bush. And he really didn't know what was going on like that. Whatever. Like, you know what I mean? Whatever. Who's who's fucking judging the guy? But I'm not going to act like this ain't happening right now, too. Like, you know what I mean? And I I truly, truly, truly 100% think that there is either some back like backroom deal going on with the military industrial complex or whatever just for the reconstruction or... To go even further to say, hey, we're going to sell you the guns, and when these fools blow you the fuck up, we're going to help rebuild your cities. <laughs> yeah, so uh, case in point, actually, um, the initial aid packages that we had sent over specifically to Ukraine during the beginning stages of the war were typically um, effectively surplus, like military surplus that hadn't just been pushed onto the private market yet. So old shit, uh, explosives that were getting aged to the point to where it's like, eh, it's getting a little bit too sensitive, or who knows how this is going to behave when it goes off. I want to use um, a zoom. <laughs> yeah, exactly. We, hey, we, we, we're at a point where we either need to throw this out, blow stuff up in place, mm -hmm. um, or find something else to do with it. And so officially, as far as I'm aware, we had just wrote up an aid package and sent this over to Ukraine. Um, and we effectively paid ourselves for that asset. Yeah. So the U.S. government had sold this stuff to Ukraine with a loan that we had wrote, wrote to ourselves, basically. So we said, hey, here's $100,000 or $100 million worth of equipment. Uh, we're giving ourselves $100 million worth of this equipment. 
or a hundred million dollars for this equipment, and then Ukraine's getting the stuff. And then we had started to funnel cash into this uh, country as well. Yeah. But to to your point though, Core, it's it, and this is one of the things that blows my mind where people don't just assume that stuff like that happens because it's like, hey, we're talking about human beings here. Mm-hmm. And if you just observe human beings and typical human interactions, think about your high school class, right? And the sort of people who were conducting themselves and how they behaved then. Those are the people, the same types of people that go out into politics or into business and do all the shady shit. It's mm-hmm. just another example of human behavior. It's like we almost can't help it. You yeah, know? No, no. Like you just like the like people, it's like those sayings of like people who who want power always seek power, right? Like absolute power corrupts absolutely. Corrupts blah, absolutely. Blah, blah, blah. Like, you know, like all those all those fucking funky ass sayings, but it's like truly like when you can at like at a, or, at a wave of your pin make a couple hundred million dollars like who wouldn't you know like really precisely or worse yet uh well-intentioned fools mm. who think they're doing something for the right reasons um but then they're interfering with stuff that they don't understand um or that's why I like, never like you're, plan you're, anything out. I always do everything on a whim. So that way you can never. <laughs> I don't know what's coming next. Exactly. You don't know what's coming next. We're all going to find out together. <laughs> next episode <laughs> of Dragon <laughs> Ball Z. I'm negative $70 in my account right now. <laughs> oh, God. You got to knock that <laughs> off, bro. Well, I'm just saying, don't take don't take legal advice from me. Uh, that's a good point there. But yeah, no, it's, it's, it's either um, uh, you're going to end up with a well-attentioned fool who could cause something bad to happen, even though they think they're doing the right thing. Um, or you're going to end oh, up dude. with someone who's maliciously trying to harm someone else or who is trying like to advantage option. themselves. Mm-hmm. And this is normal option. human behavior. Mm-hmm. Happens. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they, um, what is it? The, the, the pay, the, the road, the roads, the hell are the paved. Hell yeah, the roads, the hell are paved with good intentions. I'm yeah. look at you. I didn't know I was a fucking it. ventriloquist. I didn't you know get that. it. You get it. You like fortune cookies, bro. I do. <laughs> Those are my favorite. But it's true. It's, it's fucking true, bro. I I like to use the um uh chick out of the egg analogy, right? So like you've got if you've got a baby chick in an egg, it actually needs to struggle against getting out of the shell to develop muscle to like even walk. And mm-hmm. if you help it, you're going to jack it up physically and you'll make its legs deformed. Mm-hmm. So you, you have people who go out and, Oh no, I'm going to help the little baby chick out of the egg. And then you fuck it up for life. They, they use the uh, airplane analogy where if it's going down and the oxygen masks come out, you have to help yourself before you can help the person to your right. Because if you yeah. struggle to help them, you both might pass out. Bro, and it just and it just sucks, right? When I think of where snakes on a plane, it's scary, dude. <laughs> bro, like it could happen have, to anyone. You have a when snake you have, like your dick. When snakes you have plane, good bro. intentioned, when you have good intentioned people, bro, just carrying out a mission, like you know, what I mean, they're just doing their job, just doing the thing that they think is right. You know what I mean? And, hey, the, the the Inquisition thought they were doing the right thing by burning all those witches. You know, they thought they were doing the right thing. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> That historically had to like start my taste in women right there. <laughs> that, is, that is a candid event for me. Predestined had to before I was born. Because of- it had to happen just like that, bro. Some oh chick had to be like, hey, look what I can do. And some dude had to be like, witch, burn her, start a whole fucking epidemic. And then today I'm addicted to chicks who got that little fucking the choker, the little black one right there, bro. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's funny. Saying? It's funny, dude, to think. Like, I've I've listened to some podcasts, right? More famously, Joe Rogan's. And there was this thing of where oh, okay. I guess there was ergot or something, right? Like some hallucin- yeah. some hallucinogenic. Yeah, er- er- ergot. It was a hallucinogenic fungus which can affect wheat. Uh, it would make people see shit. That sounds like my sleep paralysis de- demon's name. 
Bro, hey, I'm I'm get out of here, bro. I'm trying to fucking we, sleep. We know you're also in debt to the hat man, okay? 20 bucks. <laughs> Only 20 Yo, bucks, man. that's good. I'm not going to sleep so because I'm trying to avoid it. <laughs> Suddenly, this isn't a safe place anymore. Uh, but, <laughs> dude, just nightmare, imagine, nightmare. like, you're eating your fucking... You should eating... title the episode this, Nightmare, Nightmare, Nightmare. And there's bro. three of us, so it fits. Yeah, I'm saying, watch, bro. You're eating your evening wheat, and next thing, your wife is on a broomstick flying around the fucking kitchen because you're out here tripping can, off of ergot, can, bro. Can we? Can we? The, the if yellow it was bird. Real, how terrifying that would have been. I'm no, not saying the, it was the true, yellow bird thing. So in, in court during the Salem witch trials, this was either done as like a mass prank by a bunch of young girls to try and get someone um, in trouble. For being a witch, uh, or it was legitimately a mass hallucination, hallucination, whereby one person started to hallucinate a yellow bird flying around the courtroom, and then they started screaming about it, and then everyone was seeing this yellow bird. Uh, no, mass hysteria, and you gotta imagine, like, people were like, oh, that can't happen to me, but you don't know what, like, a life of not eating, or not, like, eating correctly, or, like, having lead in your fucking walls, or, like, Having like like George Washington had like slave and donkey teeth and like I like beer, lead in there. Beer is like, safer you're... than water. Like that's yeah, that's dude, like, you know, <laughs> and on, people... on the on the one no, I'll I'll push back on that. People still have mass hysteria today about yeah, stuff. It's 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 real is especially like when there's like someone else just being like, Yeah, like that's that's the thing, and you're like, Cool, fuck that thing. I'm on board with that. <laughs> like like how I tell the homeless people when I pass by him that he's got bugs in his skin. He needs to get them yeah, out. Yeah, you gotta get them <laughs> out, bro. <laughs> <laughs> it's fucking ruthless. Uh, no, dude, this is a core memory, and I know this is like so off topic, but I remember what the epilogue. The no, no, what's what is that book they make you read in high school about the Salem Witch Trials? Um, God, it's that famous one. Yeah, you guys had you read it right? I I did I did. Do you remember what it was I, called? Uh, Trip me up. Anyways, at the end, she remarries after her husband dies, and I remember in class being like, "Oh, that's that, I don't like that part." And the <laughs> teacher was like, "Why?" And I was like, "I don't know," but like, I was like, "I don't like that part." And now that I'm older, I just wanted to say I still don't like that part. I don't like that part. I, I support that. I hey, shout out. To, <laughs> what, what was his name? Giles Corey. Uh, so court, are you, are you super familiar oh, with yeah, um, the, the rock guy? But yeah. Not, so not... I found this out last month. No, no. At the start of this month with October and seeing all the memes and stuff. So apparently the situation was, is if you confess to being a witch, then the court in the, the state, the city or town or whatever would take all your shit and all your assets. Yeah. And so one of the reasons why he was so adamant about not just confessing and making it end quicker. They were, uh, they were putting more stones on his chest trying to get him to confess. And he just kept saying more stones or more weight. More weight. Yeah. Until it crushed him to death. Instead yeah. of just saying that he was affiliated with the witches. Ooh. Ooh. So. And that was I, who? And I cannot, Giles Corey, but I can't remember the name of the book. I'll just look up Giles Corey. If, if Jamie, pull it up. Jamie, pull that Jamie, up. Pull that shit up. Pull that but up. as someone, as someone that's happened to, I don't like the remarrying part. That shit. As an adult, that had to have been like 14 years ago. 19. No, I'm just kidding. 1692. Oh, oh, it was the Salem witchcraft trials. Get your finger under the words there, bud. Sound that uh, out. <laughs> oh, the Crucible. Jesus Christ. You oh, think okay. Two, yeah. You think yeah. two two out of yeah. three of us would have remembered the fucking Crucible? No. Yeah, you weren't the you weren't the second one, bud. <laughs> Fuck you. Sometimes I wake up there, man. Oh, I'm just kidding. That's stupid. Yeah, I don't know, dude. Like, <sighs> there's there is, uh, and this is definitely a whole different different tangent. Is this, but I definitely do believe is that there is some factualness behind. The Salem witch trials, right? 
Yeah. And I say that because though, yes, the pilgrims and there's people who came over here because of religious persecution, we come to find out a lot of them were just Freemasons. A lot of them were scientists and people who like stood against the church. Yeah. But I do believe that there may have been a ship or two of some fucking bitches who like to do some weird shit. Like, you know, like these. No, 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 definitely, no definitely, definitely. It was, um. Yeah, it was, it was um, just their paranoia, dude. It was, they were fucking, they had, like, the slaves were bringing over, like, their voodoo talk and, like, their, like, culture and history, and white people were like, we don't like that. Like, that's, like, like, but they believe the stuff that they believe. They're like, oh, that's associated with demons. So for you to, like, even practice, like, they were scared of dancing, bro. Like, dancing was mm -hmm. prohibited. So when so they on, on, girls, on the like topic in the woods it's like oh they must be hypnotized or they must be like worshiping the devil because why on, else would they be out there fucking doing this so on the topic of dancing let's see if i remember jig together hit him with a stinky look but yeah, um, on the on the topic of dancing um and i believe at that point in time there were still there was still the persecution oh, of individuals in europe as well as the part where the pilgrims came from in like Wales, England, Ireland, Scotland, all throughout there, who are still practicing pagans. Uh, the various you different... You couldn't show ankle and they're out there dancing, bro. Yeah. That's where football well, so, should have been so, set. So case Imagine in point... Imagine Kevin Bacon, 1692. <laughs> sorry, I'm sorry, bro. <laughs> case in point... Uh, for these people who were living in this new settlement, um, they just came from a world whereby uh, dancing was associated with paganism. Therefore, you were a worshiper of the devil and you should be burned at the stake. Mm -hmm. How probable is it that some of those individuals in Europe who are still being persecuted for that were like, fuck that shit, hightailed it over here and then just... You know that it started over here too. Exactly, and to yeah, because to think that I feel like every culture has a certain level of magic that they practice. Yeah, no, like, every people, every 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 culture has come up with that. As, as a as a white person, white people are like the only people to not associate like spirits or an identity to things, like. What is it in Japan where they believe if something's been around enough or it has enough influence, it gains its own like kind of like spirit? Yeah, we're like so they so that, believe that. Like, good. That actually is something that we used to have. We're um, like the only people nowadays who don't do that, where we don't associate like like the like the clouds doing something, you know, being like an act of God. Mm -hmm. And not being its own, you know what I mean? Like it's mm -hmm. like like the the wind is angry. God it's, damn it's, it's us own our, thing. Yeah, our science and our we pissed off the sun. We didn't sacrifice enough virgins to the sun. Like you know what I mean? <laughs> so so now it's not gonna rain. Well, and we you know what's you know what's funny about that? Thank you, like hard enough. And what's funny, like people don't associate like, or they think, oh. We didn't sacrifice enough, right? So they will they Im immediately associate like blood sacrifice, right? Like whether it's yeah. you know animals, humans, whatever. But at the same time, it's like, did you even sacrifice like out in the field? Like, did you right. go out there enough and right. really kill the land? Like, you know, I think we might be taking things a little too literally from the past, especially for people that were probably a little more like highbrow with their expressions. Yeah, that's so, like, that's one of those. It, you're you're I think you're absolutely on the mark with that too is like um if you think about language like take take at Greek as an example and a lot of the stuff and the way they would phrase shit um or like uh you, the topic of witches right uh mm -hmm. wool of bat adder's tongue mm -hmm. all of this very poetic witchy sounding stuff it's like you know, that's that's an old common name for that herb. Mm -hmm. Right. To try and like describe the a plant. Newt. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, exactly. Like the eye of newt is actually something that's not like mm -hmm. the eye of a lizard. <laughs> so, yeah, absolutely, you know, if you're talking about sacrifice within that context, 
take a few more, take a little bit more liberty with what that may mean exactly. And is it, is it actually sacrifice like kill a goat or is it like your allegory day, back? Yeah. Or for example, Time. right? Like, um, um, there's a, there was a Nordic practice whereby they would, upon breaking new ground, uh, splash animal blood on it. Mm -hmm. I have bone blood and bone meal fertilizer that I put around my blueberry bushes. Mm. You know, so, what I'm <laughs> yeah, take, take, take a look, take, take some of that, like, eh, are they, are they getting at something else here? Or are they being quite literal with it? Yeah, dude. And with like, even like with native American practices, right. People would trip out when they hear how like, aztecs did certain things right or how some of these people do certain stuff and it's like okay even if you go as far because i believe in magic and voodoo all that sh all of that i believe in that 110 fucking percent so all i'm saying is, is is that there was people back in the day like their daughters or their sons were chosen by the high priests at one point right to be offered right for the survival of their people right like like quite literally like whether it's for the harvest or whatever that's the survival of your people is that harvest because if you don't have a good harvest you don't have you don't have food like everyone starves to death like you know or they start eating each other which is like holy fuck like the Dahmer party right like yeah yeah we have a full-blown Dahmer party in this bitch or homie's daughter who got picked by our priest right gets thrown off a cliff what what are we doing guys <laughs> we're throwing her off we're throwing her off and it's cliff. it's and it's it's great to like uh, uh joke about that within a modern context but if you kind of stop for a sec and really think about it people still do that mm -hmm. maybe not the exact same way but in certain contexts you'll notice that same behavior still occur Mm -hmm. I used to kind of believe in nothing, and then one time I saged my house, and I woke up outside, and so there's probably <laughs> something to that. <laughs> I'm not going to be the one to unpack it, but there's something there. There's there's, there's something packed there. Do you know, I used to sage my house every day when I came home. I would just sage it, dog, because I'm telling you, when we got back from Key West, and like I kind of, like, and I stopped drinking, bro, I would like have like cold like 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 night full-blown night sweats dog like that's that's called sobriety bro it was nuts bro i thought i had pissed my that's clothes withdrawal. that was that was <laughs> that, that was, was like a demon <laughs> yeah dude it was i don't know you were on something else back then dude you were sweating the spirits out of you yeah i was sweating the you spirit were doing, out of we you. were we were doing an exorcism at least every thursday or saturday <laughs> dude and i'm telling you i would saw so i'd sage that i'd wake up possessed bro i do dude waking up staying up all night and then going to work the next day in key west was waking up in the exorcist and just having her head turned <laughs> all the way around bro that's what it felt like oh my yeah God. dude it, that's what it felt like going to Sorry, work, my neck bro. has been bothering me. Nothing so but Mr. Z's bad. pizza and a fucking throwing a Josh dog down the hash just for good measure. <laughs> or climbing up on that fucking roof, bro. It was miserable. Man, and I don't know. I think, <laughs> yeah, I think when you, when we expand kind of like what Sam said, like when you, even when you fast forward now, like you still see some of those very, old timey behavior still in this to this day like maybe not in the same ways or doing the same things right but like you kind of see of how far people are willing to go sometimes to either like i don't know like prove a point you know what i mean yeah. like like just to prove a point how far they'll really fucking go bro like it's it's nuts uh sam my guy listen i don't I didn't want to. I didn't want to hold you too long. I know you guys are three hours ahead. Yeah. No, we're good. We're good. I right. I do not have to work tomorrow. I work Tuesday through Saturday. So if you want to keep going, oh. that's totally fine. Or we can try to get to the bit, baby. <laughs> are you still locked in Austin? Yeah, I'm right here. Oh, my fucking guys, because I I looked. I know, no, because I looked at the clock. I was like, oh no, dude. New York is a place I'm I'm wanting to go. Wish me up there. there. Don't come here. I'm no, trying. Should... I want to leave. To visit no. or to stay? 
Just to visit. To visit. Oh, okay. To visit, dude. He, he likes North Carolina. Yeah, I'm trying to get there, bro. Or um, or we could all meet in Texas and start something out there. But Texas is for, cool. Texas is Vermont fun. Vermont especially. is calling – or not Vermont. God, no. I could do Colorado. I could do Colorado. Colorado is fun. You wanna, if you want to do a Ram Ranch situation in Colorado, bro. If you, if you want to talk about stuff that may or not be real, you know all the astrology bitches are out there. <laughs> I'm trying to go, dude. I'm trying oh, to uh, – uh, Sorry. No, the the Carolinas oh, – New, New York State. The New York – New York, I definitely – New York, I definitely want to go. I want to go to the city, but then I do oh, want to go up to – um No, well, the city just for like a week. Go to L.A., L.A. bro. Do Drive home three hours state. south. I, I go went to fucking LA, smell worst of ever. <laughs> and you're in and you're in New York, bro. No. Yeah, but pretty much. Uh except let you a have... homeless person mug you and then a rat steal <laughs> the rest of your wallet. <laughs> rat. Like now, a rat that looks like he's trying to support a family of four. <laughs> <laughs> and then it's like New York, bro. Do that and then jump in uh uh uh, freezer. You never, you never have anything good to say. You never have anything good to say about LA, but you want to go to New York City. I never get it. It's just, I went there as a kid. You right? watched. Too much it was TV. a different world there. Different. You were a kid. You didn't, you didn't see the guy get stabbed. Did you your dad said, "Hey, look at this" to make you not focus you on? Watched it. Home Alone two one too many times. You watched Trump not help that kid find his parents. <laughs> But no, I do want to go and just be like right Times Square and just stand there for a second and just take that in or be up at 4 a.m. and go somewhere to eat. Like, you know, that was like my dad's thing. He that was the thing he said he loved about New York was that at no matter what time of day it was, he could get steak right somewhere in the city. He could find a steak dinner. It's like, oh, okay. it, it was it was just a big mall as far as I was concerned. <laughs> like I, I, I got to see Times Square and I was like. It's a bunch of fucking TVs on the side of old ass buildings. Way too many damn people who smell funny. Uh, and I remember when we went last, the <sighs> World Trade Center was still being like dug up, and they were trying to redo it. So I, I would like to go there. Um, but do really, I want to be able to go to DC soon. I want to go to Washington D.C. and then hopefully stop off in in New York. I don't know if I'd be allowed. You should, you should update your will soon, bro. Yeah, that is my advice to you. You should update your will before you do anything else. DC's not that bad, but I have seen some crazy shit out there. Not like worst in our nation for like education. Isn't that yeah. crazy? And prostitution no. is well, te te legal. technically it's Baltimore. I think it technically it's Baltimore, Maryland. It, uh, it's it's it, not it's not DC. It's right. Baltimore, no, I get it. Maryland. It's right. The same, same, but different. Yeah. What is the purpose of it being its own thing? Uh, back in the day, it would have given too much uh, uh, potential authority or credence to a given state. Uh, so they needed the district for the capital of the country to not be inside of another state. Hmm. That could to use pretend that to be or, independent. Yeah, pretty much. Instead, it's all the worst corrupt. Before we invented the, in the telephone the country. All uh, funneling into one spot. Hmm. I still find it interesting that it's still in the middle of a state. <laughs> like it quite yeah, well, it's gotta, it's gotta go somewhere. somewhere. <laughs> you want it in a fucking Zeppelin? <laughs> an island, its own. Yeah, put it in Hawaii. Hawaii. Yeah, right. <laughs> that place we used to refuel our navy ships. Oh, I'm sure God. the native Hawaiians would like that. Yeah. Oh, I, but oh, I I mean, by the way, this is. They don't like it. They don't like any of my jokes. They never land. <laughs> oh my god! Unless they can do it on the military bases there, I don't think they didn't like my humor. Wait, so I don't know if I've asked really ever, but how did no, you, you have been, But my day wasn't that bad. <laughs> how did you guys? Ah, <laughs> uh, oh, yeah. Austin, do you remember the story? I've been around too many explosions. It's got to be like the fourth grade. Uh, we're neighbors. Third. Uh, maybe third. 
we we lived young. in the same trailer park, technically on opposite trailer ends park. of yeah. the trailer park, but you know. Yes, sir. I just walk circles eventually. It's like old people walking. Eventually, you'll sync up to the same path, and then you start talking for a little bit. And it was honestly yeah. like an us versus the world thing because there was, and I'm not joking, pedophiles there, dude. So we almost, had, we almost had to run in packs. And then we always had like these scouts on bikes so that like they could like go up and see if there was like pedophiles around the corner. And then they'd come back because we, we didn't have cell phones, bro. I don't even think I don't, they were really... I don't know if you remember this story, Austin. Uh, do you, did you remember uh, the guy we called Lawnmower, Lawnmower Larry? Uh, wasn't that the one who always wanted us to come in? Yes, yes, that was the guy. We used to, I, we used to like bottles and cans because we used to make like a couple dollars off it back when five dollars uh, was like fucking yeah, to twenty five yeah. cents. The fucking Ed Ed Ned you got when they get that like twenty five uh, cents. Uh, five dollars uh, on yeah. Walmart. That was our fucking shit, bro. But yeah, we used to, yeah, we used to uh, collect them. And be like, oh, I need you to come in and get them. I'm like, I'm nine, but I'm pretty sure I don't. <laughs> <laughs> no, I I don't know if you were there for this. Um, uh, but there was an event whereby we, we, we had all these pine trees throughout the trailer park and they had like the huge ass pine cones. Um, and so we hid in some bushes and like trees and we pegged them at lawnmower Larry. Cause we called him lawnmower no, Larry. He, he'd, he'd ride the lawnmower and, um, <laughs> we hit him in the head and knocked him off the lawnmower. Oh my God. Lawn I don't think I ever there when we... I don't think you were, I don't think I was there when we de declared our freedom on the fucking pedophiles, but <laughs> oh my god, a lot I, of them I didn't, would also pay us pedophiles. too, and then they stopped during. Well, we we, we would like shovel snow for people's driveways, and they'd pay us for that too, or we'd rake up leaves. Or, or they uh, wouldn't plants. pay it for us, and we'd have to or put it back. Yeah, that I do. I remember doing that. Dude, I wished I wished California had by my a ten-year-old. Wait, what? I said, imagine being extorted by a ten-year-old. <laughs> those leaves all over your yard. I'll get your neighbors too. I'll do your neighbor's yard for free, just to dump it on your yard, bro. I'm Ten I'm years old, bro. I got nowhere else to go. Did the only did way I'm leaving that, that trailer park, lady? I think we did because she had us do it for like three weeks in a row. Yeah, and then she wouldn't. And then we were, we went around to all our neighbors and we're like, hey, we'll do yours for free. Yeah, and we have a spot where we can put the snow. We dumped it all behind her car. Her. We pushed her because she was like, oh, I door. absolutely need it. I absolutely need it. I'll pay you both, blah, blah, blah. And then the third week, she's like, you guys kind of talk a lot. And I was like, okay. She's like, you guys will stop and talk a lot. I'm like, it's a lot of fucking snow. It's like up to my knees. And I was like, so and we stop and do it. And she's like, well, she's like, you shouldn't get paid for that. Now, yeah, now, so keep, now keep in mind, up. too. We weren't charging her by the hour. We gave her a set quote yeah, to do the job. We gave her three weeks to pay us for three times, or not, uh, not three times. The whole weekend. It was Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. I would have done it too. <laughs> I would have done it. I would have dumped it right on her fucking front doorstep. All, dude, dude, we all did. we wanted, all we wanted, there was like an episode of Ed, Ed, and Eddie. All we wanted was candy from the laundromat, dude. It was either candy from the laundromat or they had so Pac Man, and we would just pay. We just play Pac-Man in the laundry now. It was the only place you couldn't get molested in because the door, like the walls were made out of windows. <laughs> and the, the, the cop would all often hang out there too because like, like you could see the like road little, from the laundromat. It was the only place you could hang out indoors. We didn't have like an office. Bro, I miss like good old school like arcades and game shops and stuff I, where you could pull up and be there. If you're nowadays a fucking arcade and call yourself an arcade and you're like 80% pinball machines, I'm going to come in there and fucking tip them, bro. I hate that shit. Do not advertise as an arcade bar if it's only fucking pinballs. Get some, <laughs> get some fucking – get a light gun in there, bro. Marvel versus Capcom or Metal Slug. Like, get something in there. Get something with, like, fucking culture, like Mortal Kombat 2 specifically. Yeah, Mortal Kombat. I've, I've got one near me. It's called – um. Uh, 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 skate escape. They've got like a nice, not a like a roller skating rink. I tried That's it cool. once, bust my ass. Never again. I'm done. I think, uh, I think but like we, laser we tag and arcade games. There. Say again, your last. I think we went to a birthday party there. You probably did. I don't know if I went I to that one. I didn't have friends there. I had to have been with you. 
I was only there this, every other week. This is down in this is down near Binghamton, not near uh oh, fuck no, no, no. <laughs> Yeah. Oh my god, dude. Yeah. Binghamton was like the Shadowlands for me. It was like my dad like held me up once and he's like, You don't go there. <laughs> oh dude. We had... Man, we hey. had a, a really, really cool arcade out here back in the day. And um the smell of the arcade, right? I, I still remember like coming to Oxnard to visit from North Carolina, and I remember it was gone. I was just like heartbroken, like, what? I would spend a whole 20 bucks, like, when 20 bucks was like, like, cash Met something, money. yeah, like, 20, oh, fuck, 20 bucks. I spent a whole 20 bucks in that bitch, bro, in one night because it was just so much fun. It was ah, uh. ooh, Did on I- that topic, if you guys want to bring it over towards inflation and the devaluation of money a bit. Oh yeah. What you got? So quick shout out to a guy uh, who I talk with periodically on YouTube. Um, His tag name is the uneducated economist. Um, Just his tag name, super smart dude goes all off first source material. Uh, The broad strokes of it is this. So ever since we went off the gold standard, back when that bastard Nixon took us off the gold standard, uh, the U.S. dollar ever since then has continued to steadily inflate. Mm -hmm. Um, And we actually have to keep the dollar inflating or else the economy will go into a depression. What this effectively means is that there's this ever-growing you guys know how like we think about like the classical American middle class, you know, like 1950s type shit, mm-hmm. um, like with the boomers were growing up and all that crap. Factory workers, white picket fence house, red shutters, chilling. Oh, all, Man, all that good Family shit. and support a secret family across town and nobody would ever know. Mm-hmm. Yep. yep. Especially because there was no internet and uh, you had to wait three minutes for a photograph to and set. Um, Show up with a fake name. Start your whole new job that, that Monday. <laughs> uh, good times. Um, hey, you know, now with a, a PDF fill out forms, you can do that now too. Mm-hmm. Um, but uh, so ever, ever since we've started this ongoing trend of deflating the dollar away, there's been this ever growing kind of wedge between the rich and the poor. And so we're seeing the middle class kind of get separated over time into either one. Um, Now, of course, if you have half a brain, the appropriate question should be, how do I get the fuck on the other side of that wedge Um, and not end up in poverty and destitute, owing uh, 70 bucks to your bank and 20 bucks to the hat man? Uh, Mm -hmm. Rough combo. combo. I may never financially recover, actually. Uh, yeah, you've gotten back from worse. I know you will. That is unfortunately true. See, you'll be fine. Um, really, if if you want to avoid kind of going back to normal, like historical human normal, where there's the very wealthy and super poor people, get into assets. I don't care what you do, real estate, stocks. Do your own due diligence. Be smart about it. But as long as you own something that will cash flow, you're going to be better off than a lot of everyone else. If your credit score is not good, I highly suggest selling drugs. <laughs> For real. Get something out there. And if you're a part-time weed man and you're working 40 hours a week, give it up. It's not yeah. happening for you, dude. You got to be full time. You got to be full time. Yeah. Gotta, we'll get out. Can you even make money selling weed anymore? Like... With, uh, <sighs> no, <laughs> unless Ain't, you're on the Ain't, white market, angel dust or nothing. <laughs> yeah, dude, that's a man's drug, dude. <laughs> hey, that it, all in all seriousness, that pretty much does drive the U.S. economy. I think. I think bankers, factory workers, yeah, will shut down without it. Yeah, and I just don't. I I don't see how now, especially with all the information and all the little videos, right, you see of these guys, um, I still don't see how people don't understand now 
that that is truly the way to hold your money. Like if you really want to hold your money and be like, you know, you hear the generational wealth, you hear that shit all the time, but it's like, if you truly want something that this money can pass down to your kids and then even potentially your kids as kids, Mm -hmm. these are the type of things you got to be doing. Right. Especially real estate. If you ask me, that was my big problem is I wasn't born in a generational wealth. So that's something I'm going to have to try and do next time. (laughs) <laughs> this time i don't i'm about to give up dude this has got to be my year or like i don't i don't know man uh <laughs> <laughs> this is my year this is the this year. gotta be my year dude um uh, I, I i keep telling myself that every year and then eventually <laughs> one day it's gonna work out <laughs> yeah no, one day it'll be true. No, this is gonna be my year or it's gonna be everybody's problem dude <laughs> for real um but no so even even adjusting the way that you think about stuff right so as you were saying there are core uh with money right what what is money um so if you crack open your econ 101 textbook which gets a lot of shit really fucking wrong as do most of our textbooks unfortunately um it'll tell you that money is a medium of exchange or an agreed upon medium of exchange, whether that's something that everyone agrees a lot upon organically, or if the state holds a gun to your head and tells you to use the funny monopoly money, um, or you'll go to jail for 500 bucks, Alex. Um, mm-hmm. It's an agreed upon medium of exchange and a store of value. If your money, though, your currency, right, the stuff you trade, constantly gets devalued. So if you just leave it, under your mattress if you come back in 10 years it's going to be worth a hell of a lot less right Mm -hmm. so even starting to think and adjust about how you view money versus a currency to trade goods and services for or a store of value and our dollar is no longer really a store of value uh, if you're looking for that kind of thing, that's where you need to get into stuff like stocks, real estate, <clears throat> uh, debt, bonds, anything like that. Um, but if you're just holding money and also just relying on your income, you're you're playing a game and you don't know the rules. <laughs> you're probably going to lose. Oh, my God. Yeah, dividend paying stocks, people. I'm not a financial advisor. Just saying, just saying. It's a, it, it, as far as education and strategy goes, if you go with dividend paying stocks, um, ETFs, which are exchange traded funds that own stocks, uh, closed end funds, specifically those that own debt, they, they get paid interest for. Mm-hmm. If you just go into those three things, watch like an hour's worth of YouTube videos on it. Take responsibility, do some due diligence. You'll probably do all right, man. And again, that's another, that's another thing, bro. I don't understand how in this generation of information, right? Like you can look up YouTube videos, just simple YouTube videos and learn how to perform a trade on a stock or learn, you know, the basics of buying a house, what down payments would look like, or even renovations, Right, where to start yeah. if you're going to f- try to flip this house, right? Um, I mean, fuck. We were, dude, I was watching YouTube videos of how to install on metal roofs when me and this guy was in fucking Key West, you know? So the information is there if people are really like looking to make a substantial change in their life, you know what I mean? Or set themselves up in a certain direction or pathway, you know what I mean? Indeed. Yeah. On that topic, uh, would it be okay if I? plug a few books as recommendations for anyone who's watching this. Absolutely. Anything. Anything you got, brother. Okay, cool. Um, All right. Uh, Rich Dad, Poor Dad by Robert Kiyosaki. First book, pretty good, solid foundational one. Uh, The second book in that series, which is Cashflow Quadrant. Um, Those are the two ones I'd go for Kiyosaki. After that, he gets a bit repetitive, in my opinion. Um, If you're looking to get into business a bit more um good luck finding a copy of this but see if you can for there we go that's how the camera jesus christ mirrors um for entrepreneurs only 
uh, Strategies for Anyone Starting and Growing a Business by Wilson Harrell. Um, trying to think here. Anything by Robert Greene, but specifically 48 Laws of Power would be a good choice. Mm-hmm. And those are my top recommendations. Those will, those will give you a good foundation. I've read the 50 Laws of Power, and then I listened to the 48 Laws of Power on audiobook. Um, oh, yeah. Two of my favorites, bro. I, I if, mean, 50 was his expansion, but the 48 is, is mm, it's perfect. You guys are still here? Yeah. yeah. We're not going to ditch you. You're stuck with us. I want to go get the milk. Oof. Uh, I came back with water. I, I was introduced uh, uh, to him as an author by the 33 Strategies of War, which was mm-hmm. pretty damn solid um, uh, in the, the writing format. It stuff gives you good practical examples that you can then use later on. Yeah, um, there's um, – there's, it, it definitely can become obsessive, right, for, for some people. But I do think that in everyday life, you do see the examples of like, you know, what, what was one of my favorites from 48 Laws of Power was um, never outshine the master. Right. And yeah. Rule like, number one. Right. Like immediate off the bat. I'm like, I fuck with that because you don't, you know, if you even look into Star Wars, right. It's something that I, lo- I love deeply. Right, the apprentice is never to outshine the master. It's going to put him at risk. You know, if he's truly playing the power game, you know, and or so if, you, or if and when you do, you do it decisively and suddenly, mm-hmm. quickly. Like you know, and it's like you see that in so many different, you know, arenas of video games, right? Books, like in literature, like you see how these characters behave a certain way. And it's like, oh, you can see how like for the 48 laws of power can even apply here. See how it applies in your own life with managers and this and that. And his, his books, yes, I, I 100% recommend, man. 100, 100%. I, I think about stuff like that a lot, bro. I kind of wish they'd bring back like trials by combat as a form of like promotions at work. I feel like there's too many people at work that like have like the power trip that like you could totally kill with hey. your bare hands if it came down. <laughs> I just feel there's... like the only thing that prevents that is like the laws of the land and like the fact that I need these food tokens to get my food. <laughs> you are hey, not is, the holder uh, of those food tokens. Like, is, 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 story, uh, man. Bill Burr said in that one skit, it got fucking buried hard too. Um, power historically has to be taken. Yeah, it's not bro. Um, no one in power is ever going to willingly give up their power. We we had the chance to cough on more people and clear out some space for us, but no, we have to do social distancing and wear a mask. I'm mm-hmm. just I'm just saying it was cool to do 120 on the I five at three in the afternoon, California. That doesn't happen very often. Clear skies, bro. You would see clear skies. I thought I was in a movie, no bro. smog. Yeah, 19, bro. 1976 Same. Mustang, just the maxed out meter, the whole <laughs> engine's rattling, and I'm like, I Hell wish yeah. a cop. I just knocked over all my water, bro. Doing 115. Oh, no. I'm telling you, blasting down the 101, bro. Dude, and if, was, and if you did like get pulled, pulled over, right, just start hacking up in your car. The cop's gonna walk up and like, I did. I do the whole go wasp. away. I'll do the whole B bit from uh, uh, Tommy Boy. Yeah. Ah, they're everywhere. Ah, the bees. <laughs> they're getting me. <laughs> save, save yourself. See, dude, and what was even weird, I knew Callie, I knew there was something wrong, right, with Callie. Was Tommy or, 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 or I, I knew. I knew there was something wrong. Well, even in 2017, right, I got a job as an electrician and. I was making I was making pretty cool money, like you know what I mean, and I could live in an apartment, you know, me, my kid, and my my chick. Um, but fast forward to na- to 2020, right? Kind of started noticing it, and when COVID happened, March of 2020, right? Like it was already kind of slowly happening, but the lockdowns happened in March, and 
I still remember my work gives me this piece of paper that I'm supposed to fill out. So if the cops pulled me over, I'm supposed to show it to them and, ex and it explains why I'm out and about. And I was like, yo, you guys are fucking tripping, fam. Like, you can, I'm going to wipe my ass with that yes. piece of paper. Like, I'm going to wipe my... I know. I don't need to explain to them where I'm going or where, where I'm at. Like, I don't care what's happening outside, dog. Like, I don't give a fuck. I'll wear the mask. I'll do the six feet. Like, you know, like, I'll, I'll wait in the grocery store, you know, shut down the fucking Taco Bell, whatever, bro. Like, you know, I don't need a Baja Blast that bad. But I'll Baja Blast my brains out here. <laughs> <laughs> dude, I think you guys are fucking tripping. Callie was tripping on that one. Callie was tripping on that one. And oh, I can see them trying to do that kidding. again. Yeah. I remember I remember walking around downtown LA and they had closed everything, but if you kept a window or a door open, like they could serve from that as long as you didn't go inside. That was like the stipulation they had that you could get it, you could pick it up at the street. I remember one time like driving all the way up to, uh, to LA, so a couple hour drive. And I was like, we can go to Starbucks because what else? What else is open? And I'm like, I gotta piss. And I'm like, well, we can't let you in here. I'm like, no. I'm like, I don't know. I think it was a gas station. And I was like, I gotta <laughs> piss, dude. And he's like, I can't let you in here. And I was like, you had, like almost well, no, no, do. no, no. I was like, it was like a gas station right before LA, and they had an outdoor bathroom. And I was like, just leave the key and look the other way. And he's like, it's a thousand dollar fine. I was like, I'm gonna piss on the door like right now. And he's like, I'm not paying that thousand dollar fine. And I was like, fuck, dude. Bro, that was crazy. I, I've never you, gone to LA and not pitched in the streets. <laughs> I, have you guys heard of the um, uh, uh, the the gas station test to know if you're in like a a good area or not? No. What is that? Okay, so right, I drive around the state dollar. a lot for right with sales. Um, I know if I'm in a good area or not if the gas stations let people use the restroom or if they have a public restroom or not. True. Or if you have to have a key to get in. True. That and it, it's true. this sliding scale of like, uh, there's there's some people around here who you know aren't very great or stuff, or there's like some troublemakers. Like, um, hey, you need a key to get into the gap into the restroom. And the person just hands it to you right then and there, and you hand it back. Sometimes to, it's just a game for people, dude. I remember working overnight in a gas station. Yeah. And some dude with like shit in his hand and just rub it on the walls. And they, uh, yeah. I was making like yeah. $7 an hour and they were like, go clean that. I'm like, I'll quit right now. <laughs> I think I was making $8 because $7 is the minimum wage. So he like, Craig, let me have a dollar more because I volunteered for the overnight. And he's like, bro, he's like, I'm going to need you to clean that bathroom. I was like, this is the third time this week, dude. <laughs> she asked me for the glove before she went in. That's what was like the ultimate betrayal. Oh my God. Oh, yeah, yeah, but, yeah, yeah, no, if, if a place has like super city lighting, no restroom available, and it even has like signs up on the door, no restrooms, yeah, no, you, you need to get the fuck out of Dodge, yeah, fam. You're gonna get shot. Yeah, not a good place. And I, I do notice that, especially here in Cali, because it's you know, I'm driving around <laughs> from city to city doing these installs. Some of the neighborhoods we go to, super nice, super nice restrooms. I go in there and I'm even down. To sit down on the toilet, like it's fucking clean in here. And then there's some bro. I went into one in LA mm -hmm. and the dude was like bathing himself, dog, like in the two sinks right there. Like he was almost naked, <laughs> like you know, like in there with the soap. And I was just like, Oh, what the fuck? Like, so I just closed the door, like you know, I was like, Oh, I, oh I, what the fuck? I saw that at a, a train station. <laughs> Um, in o Oceanside, California. Austin, did, did you go to Oceanside at all or not really? I lived in Oceanside, right? Oh, yeah. Three and a uh, half years. I'm sorry. Uh, yeah, I, I saw a guy bathing in the gas station uh -huh. or in the restroom on the train station uh, like that. And don't get me don't get me wrong, bro. I've washed my balls in a gas station before. We've all done it. I'm just saying. Well, yeah, but like your whole body, though. You know, I mean, I do the diamond, the fucking the diamond. You know, sometimes on a long drive, we've got to. <laughs> oh yeah, you know, like if if I'm I'm talking like full on soap shower, and they're not like you know yeah. you get the you get the you get the um, um paper towel, you fold it up, you know, you get some water in it, use the hand soap, and you get your pits real quick because you've been driving all day oh, with no man. AC. That's a different story. That's, that's respectable. Yeah, that's that's a bird bath. 
this dude was taking a shower in the fucking in the sink right there, but I was like, no way, champ. Uh, even like, uh, cause I had moved from California last year. I had moved from California to North Carolina and I got there by car and I was even on the phone with this food for a cool little chunk of it. Um, but there would be places I would stop and it was like, oh, yeah, I remember that. yeah, like I'm not stopping here for gas. Cause you, you just look, it's like not. Nah. And so you have to hop on back on 66 and keep driving. And next thing you find the next the next closest place, you know. Um, I've been I've been like California, drive from California to Florida, and then Florida to New York. I've been all through that. And out of everywhere I've been, California has got the only bathrooms that look like it would affect your credit score to go into. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Florida's got some bad ones, don't get me wrong, but it's usually lack of maintenance. Kelly's got weird, bro. It's Kelly's weird. got bathrooms, and I'm not trying to throw shade at anybody, but Kelly's got not these bathrooms shade. that homeless people look like they breed in, bro. <laughs> <laughs> California's a beautiful state, but as soon as the sun starts going down, they start spawning in like mobs of Minecraft, bro. <laughs> bro, and they look like Mad Max characters, like dude, like yeah, just like covered in me. soot. <laughs> and the worst part is you can't even farm them for XP. Oh I know. <laughs> you should, bro. They uh, look like they drop common loot, bro. I'm telling yeah, you. well, you know. Boys, listen, I gotta shake out of here. Yeah, I got sure. some, right. I got some stuff to do for the evening. Yeah, homework to do. It's but listen, the milkman, unlucky oh, charms podcast. Thank you for fucking dropping in, bro. And yeah, and, and I was just coming to say hi. I didn't mean to crash the whole pod. No, no bro, bro, you should name this, this one nightmare, 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 nightmare. I probably will. I yeah, honestly, yeah, yeah. the angry capitalist nightmare now. Remember, uh, anything you want to, anything you want to plug, anything you want to drop before we sign out? Nope, does it all for me. Uh, angry capitalist, Sam, the man. I do. The milkman. Yeah. What do you got? <laughs> what are you doing tomorrow, bud? Oh yeah, the usual Hell Tuesday. Yeah. The usual Tuesdays. Uh, the unlucky Tuesday. The unlucky Tuesday crossover episode. Uh, crossover episode. It's been tomorrow Tuesday. No. That's the name of their show. Yeah, it's oh, the okay. usual Tuesday because usually it's on Tuesday, but sometimes we do it on other days too. <laughs> I am. I have interviewed them all one by one, and now we're actually going to do it. And I've been on the smoking section and the usual Tuesdays, and now the last thing we haven't done has had us all on one again yeah. from my end. So that's what we're doing next. Yeah, scheduling dude. permit. Yeah, and Sam, bro, I'll, I'll talk to the boys too, man, and get you get you over there. Let you talk over there too. All right, um, sounds good. Yeah, man, we can get, we can all just keep on doing these little collabs. This is what podcast to me. This is like what podcasts are supposed to be about. Like, you know, what I mean, you have some wild talks, like, bro. We talked about witches. Like, what the fuck, bro? You we like, went from World War II to witches to horrible. why you're probably gonna <laughs> die, die whore. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie. This was like a roller coaster, but it's like one of those roller coasters that makes you sit upside down for a little bit, like makes you think like the ride stuck before it finally uh, catches the room. <laughs> I'm only being in the dark here. Oh my god! But boys, thanks because the Hatman wants his money. It's gotta be, bro. Boys. I need to take some Benadryl. Thank you for being on the show for real, for real. Like this was my fun. Pleasure, yeah, it was fun. it's good to talk with you guys. All right. Yeah. Tune into our show tomorrow for all of us again. Absolutely. But on mine. But on, on the Lucky Charms. Yeah, because I'm going to wait for a link from you. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to host you this time. Okay, so everybody, check out the Unlucky Charms. Sure. Right. Subscribe, all of that. So then tomorrow tomorrow's going to be a banger of a fucking episode, I know. I've also interviewed the Angel Capitalist, and he's also interviewed me. So that's two more episodes you go see on both of our channels as well. Yeah, you guys check it out. Boys, I'll message you guys right now, all right? Yes, sir. All right. Later. All right.